Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. This weekend we have cut down the gearbox and just dropped it back in the frame so you can see how much extra space we've got for an electrics box and a battery and that's a reasonable size there. I think we could fit a battery in before we locked off the back of the gearbox but we've now got at least an extra inch of clearance, 120 mil from uh, front to rear so we should get a reasonable size battery in there in the battery box and perhaps a couple of other electric doodars at the same time. So that's on the bike side, the actual case of the gearbox. Inside the gearbox, well we started on that and that's in the shed. I'm just going to teleport there now and we'll have a look back in the shed right so here we have the box uh, assembled with these bars here in place of the casing there's three of them one two and the third ones on the far side and what we've done is we, we've put those in we've adjusted the length so between there and there is exactly the same size or distance as the uh, gearbox case and um, that and there's the same amount of end float in the in the main shaft. So everything runs as usual, and we're looking at the gear selector mechanism. So this here is the gear selector mechanism. You've got two selector forks, and they will move backwards and forwards to move the gears in to to select first gear and second gear and neutral. So um, that's gone together. We've had to take the end of this so there's enough clearance at this end to get the gear selected all the way in and the piece that came off the end of this selector has been put in the middle there as a spacer so that the gears stay the same distance apart so this shaft here we need to put a thread on the end of it we need to drill a hole in the right location and then we need to screw that in from the outside so that the gear selectors are further engaged onto the gears and that they can then select left and right and center. Um, on that, what we'll probably do is we'll probably put a bit of shim in there, maybe five, five thou, when we when we drop those on and we mark through. And that way, um, by taking the, the shim steel out afterwards, the bottom of the selector isn't going to be rubbing or pressing down on the gear. It'll be just above. Um, what we've done earlier is the piece that sits on top of here that's a press fit on another shaft that actually does move and slide the selectors back and forth that's underneath here and it's been on v blocks earlier so that we can machine this edge here absolutely parallel to this piece of silver steel so that when we take a reference measurement we've got something to measure it off that's parallel to everything that else that runs in the box um somebody the other day suggested undercutting the gears well you can see there hopefully you can see that fairly clearly the gears are undercut uh, and what that means is uh, for those of you that, that weren't aware is that if the gear isn't all the way home when torque is applied uh, by the engine the effect of that not being parallel will pull it into gear rather than push it out of gear if you imagine if if that was was out of parallel that way rather than that way it the effect of it will be to push the gear away but as it is now the effect of it is to pull the gear in uh, standard standard norton arrangement so that's pretty much where we're at at the moment uh, assembling the skeleton box we've got to carefully mark out where the drillings will be we've got to put a thread on the end of here cut it to length we've got to put some loctite in and, and screw that put a, 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 a probably a slot in the back so we can screw it in with a screwdriver or something similar uh, so at least then we've got the selectors in place and we can select the gears smoothly without the selectors running on uh, running hard on the gears themselves and then the second part will be to finish measuring and marking this and drilling that through so that when you pull this bar backwards and forwards it moves the selector forks and selects the gears so there's quite a bit to do there and there's quite a bit of thinking and measuring and all the rest of it we've dug out this jig again if you remember uh, from previous videos these two um, end caps that have got a spigot on them that spigot locates in there so for doing something like a hole that goes straight the way through um, to line up this end with that end we bolt them together through there and then they're right next to each other so we guarantee that that's parallel when we drill it through um so as a fair bit's been done that's the box sort of assembled and you can see roughly how it's going to operate um 
that's as far as we've got this weekend. It's a reasonable amount of progress against the plans. So that's it for now. As usual, thank you for watching. More updates will follow.